I hear you got an epidemic of flu over where you're living. Yeah, and believe me, I took the old shot in the arm, too. I'm a guy what takes no chances. Hey, looky, there's another load of them rubbernecks down there getting their tonsils sunburned. Tower of Babylon was a doghouse, 1,265 feet, 102 stories above the ground. At its pinnacle, a mooring mass was empty. A quarter of a million tons of stone and 60,000 tons of steel were used in its construction. 19 million feet of telephone, telegraph, and electric wiring, 125 miles of piping. It is a city within itself having its own banks, restaurants, stores, laundries, and its own fire and police departments. Within these walls revolve the mighty wheels of the business world. 50,000 people depend upon this building for their daily bread. It is success or failure, triumph or defeat. And I said to him, that's a wise guy. When I got into this lingerie, it was all alone. When I got out every morning. Well, I have to to keep my job. Don't you worry about that, man. You're quite the nicest secretary I've ever had. Oh, thank you, Mr. Going up. I, I forgot 
I saw the way he was holding your arm. He was just being polite. Yes, I know. I'd like to take a good sock at that guy. Now I can take care of myself. What do you want me to do? Quit my job? Well, I can get along without any of his dough. Well, maybe you could, but we could. Say, listen. You can keep him in his place. You know how. You're not dumb. I don't know why I put up with you jealous. Well, we went together a long time before you let me hold your arm that way. Garden's a pretty place, ain't it? Yes, just beautiful. How much money we got in the bank, Mary? Eleven hundred and eighty-five dollars. We'll have enough in three more months. Seems like three years to me. Me too, Jimmy. I wish I knew how to make a lot of money right quick. So do I. I'm sorry, Mary. What a party. We had to leave before it was half over. I sent the leech home for one of my street dresses. Say, it's about time you got here. I'll keep your shirt on. Say, Mary, be a good egg and help me fix this darn thing. I don't want to ruin it. Yep. Just mm -hmm. up there. Mm. Hey, don't you wear anything under your dress? <laughs> don't be old-fashioned, dearie. You're a... Ow! Well, 
I guess that'll have to do until that Palooka gets here. Hello. Hello. Hello, National Product Corporation. Who's calling Mr. Burns? Yes, just a minute. The boss pays more attention to the stock market than he does his own business. I guess he makes a lot of money in the market. He has to make plenty, the way he spreads his dough around. Hello. Hello. National Product Corporation. Yes, just a minute. Hello. I am ringing them. Just a minute. Hello. 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 Oh, hello. Yes. Yeah. Good night. Maybe. Harvester supplies, eight and seven eighths, down three eighths. Hardwood products, 28, down one half. Interboro, 72 and one eighth, down one half. Industrial carbide, 32 and one half, down one and one quarter. Engine oil. Yes? Yes. Yes, I, I know the market's shaky. Yes, sir. Well, how much do I need to cover? Two thousand. Don't get it down here by noon, we'll have to sell you out. to add these to his head office reports. Is that all? Yes. Oh, Mr. Burns. Yes? I'd like to ask your advice. Well, of course, Mary. Sit down. Thanks. Well? I want to make some money. It means an awful lot to me. And you know all about investments. Well, yes. I have a thousand dollars. I don't suppose that seems like an awful lot to you. Mary, a thousand dollars is a lot of money to anybody. Well, I thought you might be able to... Well, you know, I do know of something that's likely to move up rapidly in the next few weeks. Well, of course, I'd like to know that it's safe. Well, I'm in it myself, Mary. That's what I think of it. Conservatively, I should say that you'll make $500 in less than a month. Well, I'd like to think it over a little. You'll have to decide before noon. Well, thank you. I will decide before noon. All right. Mrs. Burns hasn't arrived yet. She probably stopped downstairs to see her attorney. You're Inspector Connors now, huh? Yes, and I have you to thank for that, Dave. <laughs> Nonsense. You deserve promotion. Yes, but if you hadn't put in a word for me with a commissioner, where would I be? Now, Ed, please. <laughs> well, I just wanted you to know how I feel about it. Okay, Ed. Good morning, Inspector Connors. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, miss. Oh, I just love military gentlemen. They're so dependable. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Whitman. I'm awfully nervous this morning, but I'll be all right. I just took a bromide. Uh, your stomach will be as bad as your nerves if you're not careful. You know, I've been worrying about that, too. Do you suppose... Anyone waiting? Yes, Mr. Geller, the president of the bank. He says he's in a hurry. Well, show him in. Yes, sir. Come right in, Mr. Geller. Oh, Dave. Oh, Mr. Geller.
What is it? I had to come up, Dave. I couldn't talk over the phone. It's too important. I've just had word that the United Mills and the Demure Estate are going to withdraw their account. What? They've been with you for years. Why, at this time? That's what I've got to find out. You know what it would mean to the bank's position if word got about. Hmm. Well, you better send for Camel and Chadwick. They control those accounts. And get hold of a couple of your bank directors. It'll have to be an unofficial meeting. You can't take any chance of arousing suspicion, even among your own employees. We'll, uh, we'll have the meeting here. S Suppose I can't convince them. Yeah. Well, you let me do the talking. I'll get them here as soon as possible. Right. I'm relying on you, Dave. Yes, Mr. Whitman. Bring me the Tower Security Bank file. Yes, Mr. Whitman. Mr. Whitman, you know all my savings are in the Tower Security. Well, so are mine. I haven't anything except what's in that bank. Do you think it's safe? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's perfectly safe. Oh, I think I'll take a pill. I wish you would. troubling you, Mr. Hoyt. It's my own personal accounts. I just can't seem to make my salary cover everything. And I'm supposed to be a pretty good bookkeeper. No, oh, that's too bad. You see, Mary, I started married life in debt. And we've never caught up in all these years. Oh, I see. I wouldn't dare touch any of that money we have in the bank downstairs. We went without things we needed to save it. You know, Mary, I've seen people get rich on a shoestring investment, but I never could take a chance. I was loaded with responsibilities. And when you get to be my age and anything happens to you or your job, well, where are you? Now you just stop worrying. Nothing's going to happen to you after 14 years at the head office. <laughs> I hope not. If you're looking for Mr. Clark, he's in the display department. You're looking in the wrong department. Oh, thank you. That guy must think I'm a bareback rider. Well, if he ever stood up, he'd know you were. Oh, where is that nitwit with my dress? Do you know Marge? Marge who? I don't know. Do I? Oh, I remember. Marge is lying. Well, what does she do? She punches the clock. So do I. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mr. Ramsey. I expect to get the electrical construction on the new Rambo building. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? I'd like to have you with me, if I get the job. It'll mean more money for you. I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything yet. <laughs> I expect to know more definitely later in the day. I sure hope you get it. So do I. In. Well, he's always in to you, even when he's out. So I guess he's in. Oh, have you got a headache? Oh, just a slight one. 
Do you know I have nervous headaches all the time? I'll fix you up. Now, this works fine for me. Only it makes me dizzier than usual. But you take it. I'd like to see what it does to you. No, thank you. I, I'd like to speak to Mr. Whitman if you tell him I'm here. Well, Mr. Whitman, Mrs. Burns is here. She... Hello? Oh, Anne. Come in. Hello, David. <laughs> Have you seen anything of Marge in there? Not in here. Good morning, Mr. Burns. Where's Mary? She said she had to go down to the bank, and if you buzzed, I was to answer. Oh, why, why the masquerade? <laughs> well, you see, I went to a party last night, oh, and... And, uh, and it just broke up. Oh, no, it's still going. But I got to work on time. Bad. <laughs> and not too good. Are we going places? Perhaps. I just want to see how you fit. You know, it, it takes a dress like that to bring things out in a girl. I didn't know you liked them. <laughs> your, uh, your friend should have given you a chance to go home and change your dress. Brooklyn's a long way to go to change a dress. <laughs> Park Avenue would be closer. You wouldn't fool a poor girl, would you, Mr. Burns? We're wasting the best years of our lives, Anne. And we're not getting any younger. That's hardly chivalrous, David, to remind me of my age. But, Anne, can't you see? I see more clearly than you in this instance, David. I've always hated divorce and all the ugly things that go with it. If I must face it, it'll be alone. Our friends will understand. Oh, my dear, it's not of them I'm thinking, but you. I won't have your name brought into it. That's final. You know, it wasn't easy. I loved my husband very much. I know. I think I loved him even after I knew there were other women. I pretended I didn't know, thinking he might change as he grew older. Men like Burns 
never change. I know that now. When it came to a point that he didn't even bother to lie to me anymore, my pride was gone. You'll let me know what happens. Hope for me, David. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Good morning, Ms. Hoffman. Mr. Burns in. I'll tell him you're here. <clears throat> Come in. Uh, sign it sincerely yours. Uh, that'll be all. Oh, so you made up your mind. Yes, sir. All right, Mary. Mrs. Burns is here. Oh, well, uh, tell, tell her to come in. People who have locks on their doors should lock their doors. We'll have luncheon together here. All right. You might have given her time to go home and change her clothes last night. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You're looking remarkably well. But then you never seem to change. And since you ask me, I'm quite well and doing very nicely. Are you really, Kenneth? No. I'm very low and practically broke. Oh, I'm sorry. I can imagine. Well, if you've come to gloat over me, go ahead. That's not what I came for. What then? Kenneth, I want my freedom. No doubt you'll be glad to have yours. I'm not so sure. After all, being married to you has given me certain compensations. Yes, Ken, you've gotten everything. Except these. They're your only gift. The only two hours of happiness that you ever gave me. Oh, I see. I suppose Whitman put you up to this. So that's why you want your freedom. You're in love with him. Yes, Kenneth. I want you to make just this one gesture of decency. Decency? You're a fine one to talk about decency. Now that I'm broke, you want to divorce me. Well, whose fault is it that you're broke? You had nothing when I married you, but that didn't matter. I gave you everything I had. My youth, my inheritance, my happiness. And you spent all that I gave you on other women. Please, Kenneth. Let's not be common. Tell me that you'll give me a divorce and let me go. Leave me at least this one memory that isn't degrading. 
All right. I'll give you what you want. But it's only fair that I should get something out of it, too. But I've told you, I have nothing left. You can get anything you want from him. He's mad about you. Get him to make a settlement on you before you marry him. You're smart, you know how to do it. And what's more, you're worth it. Give me $50,000 and I'll call it quits. I've got to have money. And you're the only thing I've got left. I thought I knew how low you were. But I didn't. Is that so? Well, what about you and Whitman? Go on. Divorce me. But before you succeed, I'll spread his name across the headlines of every newspaper in the city. I'll show up the high-minded Mr. Whitman for what he really is. I'll smash his public career. Let's not be common. Is she burned up? Yes, Mr. Burns. Any particular reporter, Mr. Burns? Oh, Walter. Okay, Mr. Burns. What are you looking for? I I'm looking for a woman. That is, I mean, the girl. Yeah? What kind of a place do you think this is? Her name is Marge Lyon. Well, don't peek. Ask for her. I got tired of asking for her on the 14th floor. I want a personal voucher for a thousand dollars. Well, you're way overdrawn now, Mr. Burns. Do what I tell you. Well, I wouldn't dare sign another voucher for you without the knowledge of the home office. You want to keep your job, don't you? Oh, I've got to keep it, Well, sir. then get this straight. If that voucher isn't in my hands in a half an hour, you're through. Well, you don't mean that, Mr. Burns. You heard me. I'll get out. for Mr. Burns. Right in there. Thank you. I'm in call, sir. Fine. Oh, Jimmy. I've got that contract. Gee, that's great. When do we start? In a couple of weeks. Oh, that's well. It's lunchtime. Somebody I want to tell this story. Well, oh, give him my love. <laughs>
Mr. Hoy. Say, you better let me help you downstairs. Oh, Jimmy, I'm all right. Well, you don't look so good to me. Oh, it's just something that happened downstairs in the office. You mean that guy Burns? I'd like to get him in an alley for about five minutes. He's a hard man. No soul, no feeling. He makes you wonder if it pays to do right. Oh, Jimmy! Oh, Mary. Hey, what's the idea of letting that guy keep you over time? Hope you like chopped egg sandwiches. Did you hear what I said? I wish you'd drop, Mr. Burns. There's nothing I'd like to do better. Okay, my goodness. Hey, wait, uh, that's your dessert. Oh, my. Oh, thank you, sandwich, huh? You certainly do make nice... Can you beat that? I dropped my cake. Oh, you can have half of mine. Oh, that would be nice. Thank you. Tell me, you're sick. I never felt so good in my life. And I got lots to tell you. Tell me. Well, listen, darling, we've got to get married right away. Right now. No, Jimmy, not until we get more money. Say, you're looking at a guy that's on his way to be a big shot. Will you talk then? Well, we're putting equipment in the new Rambler building. Who? Well, me and Mr. Ramsey. We settled it today. I'm going to be his new foreman, and for more money. Jimmy. <laughs> oh. And that isn't all I found out. I went down to see the real estate man. I told him about my new job. And he said we could have the house for $1,000 down. What do you think of that? So we'll go down to the bank this afternoon and draw up the $1,000, go down and pay it on the house, and we can get married tonight. Oh, wait a minute, Jimmy. Well, what's wrong with that picture? Well, I can't get ready in such a hurry. Well, you've got a hat downstairs, haven't you? <laughs> That's all you need with me. Well, what good is the house without furniture? Oh, furniture. You can buy all you want for a dollar down. And that's just what's wrong with the picture. We're not going to start our married life in death. Say, are you trying to give me the runaround? You can't give me one good reason. Well, I won't leave Mr. Burns without giving notice. Oh, so that's it. Stalling me so you can keep on working for him. Well, we'll have a showdown right now. You're going to do as I say. You're going to quit. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm not married to you yet, and you're not going to dictate to me all the rest of my life. Oh, I suppose you'd rather have Mr. Burns dictate to you, in his way. And maybe I would. Anyway, he's a gentleman. He doesn't go around bragging about socking somebody in the nose every five minutes. I'm beginning to see the difference. But, Mary, it's because Well, I... you've got a funny way of showing it. If you love me, you trust me, and you don't. But listen, Mary... And if I was fool enough to marry you, you'd think I was carrying on with every man that looked at me. And I'm not letting myself in for that. Oh, but Mary, please listen. Oh, let me alone.
I'm expecting Mr. Geller with some gentlemen. We're not to be disturbed regardless of anything. I understand. I'll sign my mail now and get it out of the way. I understand Mr. Geller is holding a bank meeting here. Bank meeting? Oh, is that what it is? Young woman, I left a lot of important business to come here. Now I want to know what the trouble is. The trouble? Uh, well, Mr. Geller hasn't come yet. Uh, will you go inside, please? Is this where we're meeting with Mr. Geller? Yes, go right inside. Is Mr. Burns in his office? Yes, he's got Marge in there. I don't know how she gets away with it. National Products Corporation. Yes, just a moment. Hello. Yes. Yes, just a moment. Everybody here? I guess so. I hope so. I don't know. Remember, young lady, we are not to be disturbed. My heavens, what are you going to do? What's that? Oh, yes, sir. No one will get near you. Very good. Kind of looking at that sour face of yours. Yeah, I saw you when you came in. What's the matter? Yes, you gal, give me the gate. Oh, shut up! National Parks Corporation. Come in. I'm sorry. Uh, what is it, Mary? These letters, Mr. Burns. You forgot to sign them. Oh, uh, put them down over there. I'll look them over later. Oh, Mr. Burns. Well? May I speak to you alone? Yes, of course, ma'am. Oh, uh, Miss Lyon. Will you, will you see if you can get that reporter on the wire again? Well, they said he hasn't come in yet. Well, try again. Say it's important. Sit down, Mary. Now, what is it? This bank has always operated on a safe and sane policy. 
keeping its assets sufficiently liquid for an emergency. Mr. Camel, what can the demure estate possibly do with such a tremendous amount of cash? Hoard it? I had no such idea, Mr. Whitten. I merely thought that Mr. Mr. Chadwick, your concern already has a vast cash reserve that isn't working. Instead of adding to it, you should be putting it back into circulation. But we have the privilege of withdrawal. Gentlemen, there are times when we must all forget our privileges. Today, we must think and act differently than ever before. Private fortunes are part of our national strength and should be used to fortify our weaknesses. Gentlemen, do you realize that every dollar taken out of circulation means a loss of $10 in credit? Mr. Whitman's office. Let me speak to Mr. Geller. Mr. Geller? Oh, um, he isn't here. I says, both says plenty. Walks out on me and leaves me flat. When you've been married as long as I have, you'll know that love is a racket. It's a kind of give and take. Well, I took plenty. Well, give her a ring. I've got to have the money back. Half of it anyway. But I've already sent the money down to the broker. But don't you understand? One minute. Hello? Oh, hello, Walter. Yes, I've been trying to get hold of you all day. I've got a hot story for your paper. It's something that'll knock a couple of reputations into a cocked hat. It's uh, about a very prominent man in this town and all right, you get over here in an hour and I'll give you the details with photographs and everything. Okay. Thanks, Walter. I want to give Jimmy back his share of the money. Then I'm through with him. Wait a moment. Mr. Whitman's office. This is the cashier of the Tower Security Bank. I know Mr. Geller's there, and I want to talk to him. It's quite important. Oh. Yes, I know, but Mr. Geller uh, doesn't want to be disturbed. Well, all right, wait a moment. This audit shows that the bank is in the best possible condition. You men understand finance. The man of the street does not. He grasps at the slightest rumor. Imagine what the small depositors would do if they thought they were going to lose their life savings. What's the matter with her? Why, she said there's going to be a run on the Tower Security Bank. Tower Security Bank? I know somebody's got money in that bank. Let's telephone. Going up? Nice. I'm so 
certainly sorry to have made you so much trouble. But I do want my money. You can get it for me, can't you? Certainly, if that's the way you feel about it. But you insisted on my taking it, you know. Have you brought that voucher for a thousand dollars? I won't take the responsibility. I can't. Then you can take the consequences. You're through. I worked hard for you and the company. Go on, get out! Before I go, I want to tell you something. Everyone who works for you hates you, but they haven't the courage to tell you. Men like you always have someone in their employ whom they can torment and persecute. Someone weak and powerless who can't fight back. Someone like me. I suppose when you were a child, you pulled the legs off grasshoppers just to see them wriggle and squirm. Get up here. I've had enough of this. Oh, I'm not afraid of you any longer, Mr. Burns, because I'm honest and you're not. You've been using the firm's money to gamble in the market. Shut up. You've covered your tracks pretty well up to now, and maybe I can't even prove it, but I know you're a thief. Look. Get out! Just a minute, Harry. Now, you must have paid any attention to Hoyt. He's excited. He doesn't realize what he's saying. I'm sure I put it in the black suit. Hurry before the bank closes. Pardon me, does my sign work here? Wait a minute. No, no, not you. I'm sure you'll find it in the inside pocket. Beautiful girl, I've been looking for her all day. Do you happen to know her? I haven't seen your crazy bimbo. Shut up. No, no, not you. Have you found the pants? And if you leave your money where it is, you will not only be benefiting the bank, for performing a grave public duty. That is all, gentlemen. What do you say, Camel? I'll stay with you, Geller. So will I. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Old fool's crazy. You'll get your money. But I want it now. But... Hello? Yes. What? Why, I sent you down a thousand dollars. Your margin is gone. Uh, We've yeah. closed you out. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Mr. Hoyt was right. Oh, wait a minute. You said my money would be... Well, safe. how did I know? You used our money. Shut up. I won't shut up. You stole our money, and I'm going to get it back. Here, wait a minute, George, little fool. You let me alone. Now, listen, be reasonable. I'll let get me it go. back for you. Game of golf tomorrow. Say, I broke money for the first time. 90. Tomorrow. He's trying to hook a sucker. He plays under 80. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew how to thank you, Dave. Oh, forget it. That's my job. <laughs> for you, Mr. Geller. Hello. Geller? You better come down at once. We're having a run. A run? I'll be right down. How could a thing like that have started? Well, you have nothing to worry about now. Uh, phone the Federal Reserve. They'll have plenty of currency on hand for morning. I'd suggest that you insert a full-page ad in all the evening papers showing the bank examiner's statement in full. That'll put a stop to this. I... I hope so. Anne!
Tell me, my dear. What happened? Wait a minute, Mary. Let Don't be go. foolish. I tell you, you're not going to leave this office until you pull yourself together and promise to keep your mouth shut. Sit down. Okay. What am I doing in that bank? I never have it long enough to get that far. Well, thanks just the same. Hey, boys. Have you fellows got any dough in the Tower Security Bank? Yes, I have. Well, you better get it out. Because there's something wrong. See, Mary's got the passport. Hello, National Products Corporation. Sorry, but she's been in there ever since. Okay, sister, I'll be right up. Hey, there's a lot of excitement downstairs. What's the matter? Why, I don't know. They're acting like a lot of crazy people. Say, what's happened? I don't know. And then I struck him. Oh, I've been walking around ever since. I seem to be in a horrible dream. I tried to go away and never see you again. And then I realized that you'd guessed the reason. You wait here, Anne. Oh, no, you mustn't. Nothing you can say will stop me. I know the only language he understands. Oh. oh what's all the excitement about, Marge? All this trouble down at the bank. What's that? Tower security. Do I have any money in Well, I know somebody that has it. I'm going to give him a buzz. Will you give me a number, Marge? Sure, uh, uh, Van Dyke. Why, well, I know. Let me go. I won't let me go. Jimmy! What? Now, come up for the passbook. There's something wrong in the bank. But our money isn't in the bank, Jimmy. No. He's got our money. A thousand dollars of it. He got it. And he lost it. He told me Never that he... Never mind what he told you. He'll tell me. Get out of here, both of you. Come on, Mary. Scram. No, Jimmy. Do as I tell you. I'll run down and find out what's the matter. Please. Say, I just heard there's a run on the Tower Security Bank. What? The Tower Security Bank? Why, that's one of the strongest banks in the country. What did he say? There's a run on the bank downstairs. Why, I never expected that bank to fail. Well, oh, oh, Frank? Yes. yes. Uh, 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 tower yes. Security, yes. yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, there's sure going to be plenty tough on a lot of people who had the money in that bank. I don't understand how those things happen. Some silly rumor, probably. That bank is perfectly all right. Well, did you get your money? No, it was a minute too late. They closed the doors at 3 o'clock. Yes, wait. Have you got Jim there? Yes, yes. Just a minute. Just a minute. You had everything. I have to look at him. You can't even tell him. That's a question. All right. Yes, Look out, he's got a gun 
in there. Get out of here, all of you. Gun. Spring, 7-3-100. I uh, think you better straighten things up a bit. Hello? Give me Inspector Connors. This is Dave Whitman. I'm up to the office of the National Product Corporation. Kenneth Burns, their New York manager, has just jumped out of a window. Money matters, I take it. I'll wait here for you. For his wife's sake, I, uh, I'd appreciate it if you kept it as quiet as possible. You know. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Hoyt, there's a newspaper man here. He wanted to see Mr. Burns about a story. Tell him it's too late. You understand, there'll be no trouble now. I'll wire the home office that I'll take charge until they send a new manager on. Let's go back to the party. Why not? I need cheering up. A Rolls Royce just jumped out of my life's window. Oh, how could a Rolls Royce jump through your window? Let it pass. Come on. Oh, Jimmy. Our little house. Oh, that's all right, dear. We can get it later. Say, how much money have you got? And a quarter. I got three and a half. That's just enough for the justice of decent dinner. Jimmy. Uh, say, well, why don't you, you two hire a room? We're going to. Hey, 